Hope you enjoy this clip, and if you do, please like and subscribe. I'm pretty sure like the average person would not only not know what a quant is, but also they've probably never heard of Jane Street. So the first thing I'll ask you is, what exactly is Jane Street? How would you describe it to the average person? Yeah, sure. So uh, Jane Street is what we call a market making firm, and it uses sort of like quantitative techniques to do that. So what is a market maker, right? A market maker sort of like takes these stocks, takes these like all these derivatives and whatever, um, and just sort of like, you know, buys and sells them, right? So maybe, right, maybe if you're trying to buy like some Tesla or something, right? Let's say Tesla's at, I don't know, uh, $500. Let's say Jane Street might be buying at $499 and selling at $501, mm -hmm. right? So by doing that, Jane Street will sort of like, you know, provide this service where like people can participate in the market, right? Mm -hmm. You can buy and sell stocks, they can make, gain exposure into the sort of like, you know, uh, the markets and in the companies they believe in. Right. If the markets are going like, if people are trying to buy a lot of Tesla, it's still up to Jane Street to be able to provide both sides of the service, mm -hmm. right? And that sort of provides liquidity in the market. Um, I hear a lot about providing liquidity in the market from a market maker's perspective. So could you describe liquidity uh, in, in a bit more detail? Yeah, so liquidity is sort of like a, it's sort of like the, the crux of any like good uh, free and open market. Mm -hmm. The idea being that like, if I'm going to be comfortable trading, you know, I, I can like, again, buy or sell stocks, derivatives, you know, commodities, whatever you want. Right. Um, but if I'm going to like, if I'm going to feel comfortable, I need to feel like, hey, I'm, I should be able to buy this and then sell it later on. Right. If it's too hard to buy it or too hard to sell it, that's not going to, it's not going to make me feel good. Right. If I'm like a, like a soybean farmer, this is a classic sort of example that we sure. go through. If I'm like a soybean farmer, right, I depend on the liquidity of soybeans. Right. If I'm not, if I mean, if I have to grow myself soybeans, I have to like sort of, you know, sell that off to, you know, you know, purchase like other goods and services for my living. If I can't sell my soybeans, you have a problem. Yeah. Right. I can't, I can't reliably trust that I would be able to sell it. But right. thanks to market makers like Jane Street, uh, who provide, who provide both sides of this buy sell, they have this option, right? That sort of like serves as this insurance, right? Where it's like, oh, I know someone is going to be buying slash selling, you know, uh, my soybeans, right? And because of that, I'm more comfortable uh, engaging in that market and, in, you know, actually growing my soybeans. So as a quant, what exactly do you do in this whole grand scheme of things? The, the goal, name of the game is sort of like, you know, currently something's sitting at a price. Mm -hmm. What is that price going to be in an hour? In, in maybe even in like a minute, maybe in 10 seconds, yeah. maybe in seven days, right? These sort of like, and, and so the idea of a quant is that your main goal is to either come up with execute uh, trading strategies, right? right? You provide the service liquidity by having buy sell, but at the same time, you're also able to pocket some of that difference, right? right? You're able to be like, oh, I bought one for and sold one for one. Oh, that's $2, great, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, what each individual quant does, <coughs> so excuse me, yeah. uh, is kind of different, right? Where it's like, um, you know, some will focus more on like, oh, statistical analysis, right? Or someone will be like, oh, how do we execute this like perfectly? Yeah. How do we, and you know, how do we make sure our systems can communicate with certain exchanges um, to, to get that going? Yeah, that makes sense. And I know that Jane Street offers both quantitative trading and research internships. So what's the difference between the two roles at Jane Street? Yeah, so certainly just in general, I guess. Yeah. So certainly, uh, so quant trading and research um, is, it's kind of, it's a little bit in the name where the idea is that quant research will focus a lot more on like, um, you know, understanding the statistics, right? Doing sort of like taking historical data yeah. and sort of like running tests, you know, you run these tests, right? And you're able to like, you know, you come up with key patterns, right? Let's say like, oh, there's some significance to these results, right? Right. And the idea is that maybe you do that and maybe someone goes in and tries to trade on that strategy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what a trader would do, right? Um, a lot of different um, firms do it in different ways. Um, so for example, Two Sigma, uh, where you interned actually, yeah. um, focuses a lot more on, um, sort of, uh, automatic trading or automated trading, right? right. Where they won't have shit, people like yelling at each other we will sort of instead be like, oh, I'll try a bot to do it for me. Yeah. Right. Uh, bots are much faster than us. Um, and they can, and they can trade much higher volume. And if you can be confident in that strategy, yeah. then a bot can do it much better than a human can. Uh, Jane Street focuses more on the human side, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, we, Jane Street still does have all these like automated trading bots, but Jane Street will oftentimes also trade, train like manual trading. I remember mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of mock trading sessions where yeah. we like physically go in with like something that looks like a system that like real Jane Street traders use. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd actually like practice with it. We hit like, it, like every like button on our keyboard did something. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like a game, um, but like, you know, that's what traders do sometimes. They'll just like sit around and be like, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to sell this, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to sell this while engaging with our sort of like 
uh, training interface. I see. Um, so um, in terms of like how the um, internships go themselves, like both sides will be doing a lot of mock training. Both sides will also engage in some research. Mm -hmm. um, and this sort of like it reflects a sort of uh, ongoing shift in terms of how sort of like Wall Street is thinking about uh, trading, I think, in terms of like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. nowadays it's sort of like, oh, um, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be the pinnacle of research mm -hmm. and a lot of people train, are converting into automated, automated trading. Yeah. Um, and sort of the roles of being a quant trader and a quant researcher are sort of like merging together. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. So two follow-ups on that. The first thing is how come you guys do mock trading instead of real trading at the internships? Yeah. I mean, I guess the first thing, I guess the first thing, uh, to, to mention is that training is hard. Yeah. Um, even to this day, I, uh, you know, I, I've gone through a full internship. I have some understanding of how I would trade, but mm -hmm. It's very difficult. And on the spot, you have to make some like very um, tough decisions, right? And trading is very competitive. Yeah. You can imagine like you can't expect like a two week intern to compete against like a tenured season veteran right. on the market, right? They'll just yeah. lose money. Um, so it's just, it's just mostly cost effective for firms to just, you know, come up with their own like little mock system, right? That's so that way they can engage trading with each other, right? If you're trading with people who are like sort of similar skill level, I guess I'll say, mm -hmm. um, you feel, I feel you can learn a lot more, right? You can be right. like, oh, what did they trade and what did I trade? How can I improve on my trading, right? Uh -huh. How do I, how am I understanding this market more, right? right? And oftentimes in these mock trading scenarios, these markets are a lot simpler, sort of like um, patterns and anomalies are much more apparent mm -hmm. than in the real market. Um, so it sort of like trains your brain to sort of like, you know, understand like, oh, what am I looking for, sort of. So what are some common myths about quants that you realize were myths when you start working? Well, that's a good question. I think what I imagine the quant internship to be would be a lot of math on the board. Really diving deep into like thinking about like game theory and stuff like that and understanding, um, you know, if party A does this, then party B is going to do that. Like right, the so interviews. Right, right, like the interviews, yeah. uh, sort of you would expect. Um, but no, it turns out a lot, um, and it's, again, like I talked about sort of maybe uh, changing like ideology in the, in the world of market making, in the world of like Wall Street. Right. Um, we're a lot more de dealing with data and statistics nowadays. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but once you're, once you're familiar with that and you think you have a good shot, um, let's say you get an offer from a firm, you know, why should you or should you not go? I think if I'm talking about should not, I think the, I think the main thing is the hours, right? This is not like your typical sort of tech job that you might, you know, you might be cozy in San Francisco working like maybe 25 hours a week, yeah. let's say. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, not here. Uh, if you're going to be a real, if you're going to be a quant, probably you're going to be putting in 40 minimum hours, mm -hmm. probably 50 right. usually. Um, so if you think about the trading day, right? Um, I think the markets are like 8.30 to 4. Yeah. It's a bare minimum. If you're a trader, that's a minimum. That is already a minimum for you, 8.30 right. to 4. Yeah. Right? And usually, and you know, you got to get there at 8, right? Because and it's you, like intense. Too. Right, it's, it's intense. intense. Yeah. It's intense. And it's a lot. It's very tiring. The hours put in for quant, even in like a place that cares about work life uh, as much as Jane Street can still be a lot. Right. Uh, trading is just a very, very intense job. It's and, really competitive. Yes, it's very competitive. It's very intense. Yeah. Um, and you should expect that if you're going to be, if you're planning to enter the quant field.